Okay, I wanted to show you just a fast example of the four kinds of programming the languages that I see in Alan Bradley Compact Logics and Control basically RS Logics 5000 or um, uh, Studio 5000. So I wanted to start with the ladder diagram because it's probably the one you may be most familiar with if you do Alan Bradley because it comes with the standard license. The other three editors are only available with the Pro license. So my guess is they're probably used a lot less. But this logic's very, very simple. We're just taking I1.6 and we're going to um, a selector coil and then depending on the state of the selector coil changing the preset in a timer to uh, 2.5 or 5 seconds. So you can see uh, the timer enable is on a different input 1.2 and the timer runs until it's done then there's a reset which basically just resets it so we can kill the timer by turning off the timer enable, or we can, and I have these inputs, uh, these are internal coils, they're not matched to the actual inputs, so I can toggle them. I don't have, I'm not using forces to do it, they're just unhooked from the actual inputs. And then I can change the, the selector and you can see the preset changing. Okay, so the, these are. This is not Rockwell saying here are the conversions between function block and ladder diagram. Okay, these are my approximations, so they're not identical. So don't take this as a lesson in converting logic. Okay, I'm very kind of rudimentary at these other types as well. But here's an example of function block. In this case, because we're just doing two states selector-wise, there is an SEL select um, bit. All right, and what I've chosen to do, I'm moving I1.6 to selector 1, which is just a tag, and then selector 1 is going to selector in. And then I have my two different inputs, 2,500 and 5,000, into in 1 and in 2. Now, if you open up this instruction, you can you can change uh, these. If you go to edit it, you can change these to tags in one and in two. It doesn't have to be hard inputs like this. Just like in a timer instruction, you can use tags, variable tags. The output of this selector is not a Integer is not a, um, a boolean, it's an integer, a, a double int. So that is being shoved right into the preset of timer on. Now you could probably come up with another way to do this if you had maybe three or four settings. I'm sure you'd have to change how you do this. Maybe you'd have to stagger select bits. I don't know. <clears throat> but you can see the done bit is being recycled down to the reset right here, and you can see the dotted line, meaning that it's a boolean. Timer enable is 1.2. Again, it's a dotted line, so it's a Boolean. Whereas the other, the solid lines are non-Boolean um, values, which you can see in here. Okay, so then this logic is pretty similar. It, the function is pretty similar to the ladder diagram. I'd say it's basically the same. And then I want to check out the structured text version. This is, again, similar. However, it may not be exactly the same. Notice that the T-O-N-R instruction is being used, not a T-O-N, like in ladder. Same in the function block. It's T-O-N-R is the function. Now, if you go into instruction help for the timer that you're all familiar with, uh, you'll see right here function block is available as TONR, structured text is available as TONR, okay? 
and then in sequential function block it's not going to be available in that in that form it's completely different so you can see here I'm doing another selector selector 3 is equal to i1.6 and then timer 3 dot timer enable equal 1 uh, i1.2 okay moving down if selector 3 then so if selector 3 is true, then set the preset to 5,000. Else, because it's Boolean, it can only be two states, timer 3 preset is 2,500. So if it's 0, 2,500. Then their actual TONR instruction with the tag timer 3 in it, and then timer 3.reset is equal to timer 3.done. So as soon as you get the done bit, you turn on the reset. And this logic goes round and round, just like this. You can see for good measure, I threw a, <laughs> I threw a comment in there. Now, function chart. This is going to be the biggest departure. Um, this does not act exactly the same. The other three I'm going to show you, they act generally the same in the logic as far as their reaction to changes in the inputs. This one's different. And I'm, not, I'm very weak with this uh, sequential function block. Uh, chart stuff, so forgive me for this not being exactly the same. But you have a step instruction, and in that step we set selector 4, another boolean, equal to i1.6. Okay, so in that step we do that. And if you open up these steps, you'll see that they have um, they have timers in them, basically saying how long should this step take, because you can you can set a bit and then you can wait if you want or you can even build a delay into the step and you can see the count is incrementing every time that this thing runs it's counting and when I was messing with presets and timers things you can see I had a max timer value but right now there's no preset there's a zero millisecond preset and a one millisecond on the timer, which is saying how long it takes to actually run. And if you hover over it, you can see that they have tag names, step 001.pre, step 001.t, right? T max. So you can get a lot of data. This is a UDT. If you were to take step one, it's, uh, it's called an, let's find out what it's called. Uh, <clears throat> Is an F an SFC step sequential function chart step okay so in that step I have added an action which if I were to go edit this if you select a step you can you can see these actions up here boolean action or action I think I did a I think I did an action even though I'm setting technically a boolean. So then we go down to a transition. Now I have a split because I have, if I 1.2, so the transition says wait until the data in the body is true. So here's the body, I 1.2 being true and not selector four will go down this path, all right? Which this step is set up with a 2500 preset and a 2500 timer. I don't know exactly if the timer needs to be at 2500, but it is. So, basically if we go down this path, we will do this step two, which is a 2500 millisecond delay, and you can see it has no action off of it. It's just a delay, essentially. Then, if we go to transition two, it's I 1.2 and selector 4, not and not selector 4. So if it's selector 4 is, is 1, we'll do a 5 second delay, which you can see right here. You can see the timer is timing. It's choppy because I'm using VNC over to this PC. The PC with my software doesn't have a microphone, so I'm kind of hacking this together. All right, then we move down to these transition points. Basically, I needed a way to get the steps back into one connection back up to the top to loop again and the transitions only the only transitions can 
hook up to a, a step. And steps can't, well, steps may be able to go to other steps, but transitions can't go to other transitions on the bottom side. And you can't take two steps and combine them into one, into a new step. So I use these transitions, which is just step two dot done and step three dot done. Okay.